We would be taking the unit, waiting for the charge, pushing the button, discharging it in the various areas of the body, limb system, targeted areas, that can be used all throughout the body. And what it does is, by the same scientific principle that it threw that washer, it's going to create microelectric currents deep within the tissues of the body where it is centered over this coil due to a moving magnetic field, which is very important. Uh, it's not like permanent magnet therapy. It is a moving magnetic field which causes uh, a small current, 50 to 100 microamperes as outlined in the patent, to be generated deep within the tissues, which effectively does the neutralization of the parasites, viruses, bacteria, uh, fungi, etc. This device is a Vivitar model 1900 strobe, strobe light, speed light, speed gun. It goes on the camera. One, two, three. I pasted a piece of paper over the flash tube so it doesn't hurt your eyes. This coil costs about a dollar if you wind it yourself on an old VHS farm, and we tell you exactly how many turns, 130 turns of number 14 to 16. It's on page 6. Everything, everything I know about this I put in this paper. I'm giving you your life back for the price of the Xeroxing. This coil is co connected with a piece of lab cord in series with the flash tube. So when the capacitor charges up in the strobe, it takes about 3 to 10 seconds, depending on the life of the batteries, and you push the button, normally all of the watt seconds or joules of energy that are stored in the capacitor go through the flash lamp, makes a flash, and you can take the picture and freeze the action. If you take one of the electrode wires off of one side of the flash tube, put this coil in series with it, that entire 17 and a half to 35 watt seconds, one half CV squared, where C is in microfarads, V is in kilovolts, <coughs> goes through the coil. And what have we got here? An occult field, O-C-C-U-L-T. The Webster's Dictionary definition of occult until the last 75 years means hidden, like occluded blood in the urine. Occult means hidden. I can't hear it. I can't smell it. I can't taste it. I can't feel it. What makes me think something is happening in this coil that's going to cure the germs that are hiding in your lymph, your adenoids, your gonads. This is a washer. I got it down at Pet Boys. It's called a fender washer. Now, if you'll stand up and back, you might be able to see this magic. Well, let's get it all right. Stop. Okay. We can turn this upside down. Well, good luck. Uh, here we go. Can I hold it? Yes. It won't shock it. No, it won't shock it. It's impossible to harm it. We're going to put this washer on the coil. Now watch the washer. On three. One, two, three. What did you see up close? It kicked the washer several inches into the air. That's called eddy current after the physicist E-D-D-Y. It's called back EMF. Now here we go again. One, two, three. What happened, thank you very much, is the back EMF, electromotive force, that was generated inside of this washer repelled the field of this time-varying magnetic field. You might ask, will well, permanent magnets they, that they sell at these health fairs have any effect on this? No. They have no effect on disease that's measurable. This does. When you cut the lines of flux with a magnetic field, like the alternator in your automobile, if your engine is stalled and the 
alternator is not rotating in the magnetic field, not one millivolt comes out of that alternator or generator or magneto or dynamo, but the minute you have relative motion, you're generating electricity. This is the way all generators work. Now, let's say that my thymus is not dead, has not been taken out and mummified and put in a jar in ancient Egypt. And I hold this coil over my thymus gland and push the button. Or my lymph nodes, and these are all illustrated in your paper. I think it's page 8. Under my arms. What have I done? Every time I push this button, I have generated a 19,000 gauss, 19 kilogauss field that has a duration of about 10 to 100 micro millionths of a second. I have a time varying field. Every cell, every fiber, every nerve, every bone, every muscle in my body is a conductor, as long as it has any salt water in it. I am a conductor as long as I'm alive and I'm not a mummy. When you cut that conductor with time varying magnetic flux, you generate a back EMF just as we did in this washer and you get about one milliampere, one thousandth of an ampere of current to a four inch depth through everything that's alive in your body this is way more than you need to totally neutralize any virus, microbe, pathogen, germ, parasite, fungus that's living anywhere in your body. Now, we have cured many, many AIDS victims, many cancer victims, to have them get sick through, well, in this case, five years later because we did not get the viruses that were hibernating, were germinating in their lymph tissue, their adenoids, and their glands, etc. It would take hundreds of needle insertions with electricity on the needles, which would be very painful, and to get these things in vitro. Why not from the outside of the body with a time-varying magnetic field you can build this device for under $25 if you build your own. It is fully described on page 6 of your paper. We suggest that if you want to get well, stay well. Do not wish to die of whatever is bothering you now. You build one of these things and use it. Hi there. Today we're going to create a Bob Beck style magnetic pulsar, which is effective for inducing currents deep within tissue. The components you're going to need are a 3 30 seconds bit drill bit, cordless drill, a soldering iron, a soldering iron uh, hands accessory, a hot glue gun, solder, <clears throat> a Vivitar brand camera flash that is uh, uh, called Vivitar 283 and you'll also want the Vivitar SB4 power supply which is going to plug in right there. You will also want a 2.5 millihenry perfect lay inductor. The actual coil this is simply typed in this is simply wrapped in tape and uh, it will not really appear like this so let's go over and see exactly what it looks like this is what the coil will actually look like when you get it. Be careful of gravity, heat, 
and of course the soldering iron. I've only got one take at this, so please be patient. <clears throat> you also need a pair of nail clippers. So, now to go over the steps of what I've done already. Um, I have not started this from the beginning because I wanted to make sure it worked. I found the screws in the flash, camera flash, or camera strobe as it's called, and I've drilled here in the uh, holes where the screws are. Difficult to see, I know, but we're just doing our best. There you go, you can see right there. So from drilling within there, I've finally been able to separate out the flash. And here you see the inside of the camera flash, and there's only one thing we really need to pay attention to here, and that is this red wire right here. That's coming from this big giant tank capacitor that discharges high voltage into this uh, this here device. Across the um, uh, the bulb. So we're just going to pretty much cut this red wire and lay in a this coil in series in that red wire. This coil here and tap into the high voltage. So let's do that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to take our clippers, find the center the wire, give it a clip. Find, uh, I have also already soldered and hot glued a connection from the inductor and uh, added a length of wire. You can give, you know, a good two, two or three feet of wire. And if you want to slide some heat shrink tubing down length of the wire to give it some stability, uh, we're just going to slice off the ends of these wire. Or if you just want to play it safe, you can use a good old trusty proper wire stripper and strip the wire insulation off. do the same here with the wire that you have just sliced. Sorry for a lack of close-up, I only have two hands though. Oh, very nice. Let's see the strip wire. I'll be right back and change the focus set. Hopefully this is a better focus setting for you. Eh, not really, but there you go. And I'm going to slice the end of that wire as well. Do be careful of any possible charge that may have accumulated on this giant tank capacitor. But this has not been fired up in a long time, and it's best to short out, uh, get into the capacitor and short out both ends of it.
Okay. Here you've seen the uh, wonderful, brilliant red wire sliced open and ready for splitting. And that's just what we'll do. Simply, I'm just going to take one. Connect it. In fact, if you want to, you can uh, heat up and tin the tips. Tin this tip. And then I want the two laid together. Perhaps they can fuse effortlessly, just like that. Beautiful. And I can tin the other tips. This is useful if you don't have um, an ability to set all the wires up on the hand helper for the soldering iron. Hope you can see all that. And now we're just going to connect those two together to get them all lined up. Just Beautiful. Look at that. That is now a coil wired in series. The remaining amount of what's necessary to do is simply a matter of insulation. We have now attached in series from this capacitor to the bulb a wire that runs this coil and back. Fascinating. Just fascinating. So, let's do that. I want to, want to very thoroughly coat this in insulation, coat that in insulation. Cut that in insulation. an insulation and when you lay this back in you're going to need to and want to um, melt a hole in this element comes back on to allow the wire to come out. Something important to note, this little piece of metal has come out. Don't want that going too far away. Certainly that's part of the whole thing. So you just lay that in there and I'm pretty certain some degree that this lays down in there. And this, for some reason, lays in there. This is ah, I see. So this little piece of metal slides in 
and connects just lay it down take note that little piece of metal that come together and stays in there so keep keep aware that there's some pretty small parts here that you don't want to lose so as we continue our Installation journey here. I'm just gonna make sure this is all nice and coated everywhere. Just gonna get some high voltages running through. Don't want to take any chances, and you know, this doesn't. This whole uh, flash arrangement circuit. It can take. It can take some hot glue. It doesn't really care. It's that. Your safety is maintained is important. So, next thing we're going to have to melt a little bit with the soldering iron. And we're just going to put this up here. We're going to press up. You just need to make a modification to allow the wires to come through. That should hopefully be enough. Custom thing, Bob Beck's own suggestion right there. And it makes a nice little, little fusion. Nice little melt. Stinks to high hell, but very effective. So, let's take a look where are we at here. Okay. And some more. Drop all that insulation on there. Don't get shy with it, just let it let it cover absolutely everything. Because that is where the magic is at in keeping you safe. Given that that's all good, I'm going to reassemble this all back together. It wasn't too scary. Okay, that slides on here. Notice how the wire fits now in this little slot. I'm going to attempt to start pushing this all back down and together and see how that all goes. Okay, looking good. Looking very good. Okay, here's our little side and our piece of copper that we need to place back together. I can really understand why all these build videos on YouTube that the builder has to actually pay attention to what they're doing more so than the uh, ease of a person seeing. See how that copper snapped together? That's fantastic. Okay, so this stuff just needs to come back together here. And really what that can be is a, uh, a matter of tape. But for a quick demonstration here, right here, right now, we've got the batteries in, which unfortunately should not have done on video because that's just not safe. But regardless, we're going to get that ready um, and unplug our soldering iron, get our SB4 power supply. Be sure that it is a genuine Vivitar SB4 power supply. You can get these on Amazon and eBay and things like that. And the power supply is simply just going to plug in. And you're going to have your little deal here. That's going to plug in there. You're aware that voltage is now going to start accumulating in the capacitor. So, with that, have our coil ready. Um, and then we're just going to take our demonstration washer. Okay, we're back. We found a fender washer. This was from the hardware store, not from Pup Boys. However, it'll do just fine. 
And uh, what we do is we lay the washer down here in the center the coil. And then now that this looks like it's ready to be charged up, we'll push the button and the eddy currents will eject the washer showing that a strong magnetic field is pulsing through the coil via the high voltage. Three, two, one. And there you go. See, that just flew right out of there. I'm not sure even where it landed. Um, but there you go. We'll do it one more time. Another fender washer. There we are. Just gonna eject the uh, washer out with the eddy current. And here we go. Three, two, one. Ow, that hurt. Let's try it one more time. Let's give it a few moments to charge back up. And there you go. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So that's how you make a magnetic pulser. And if you're in a country that legally allows uh, such use, you'll put this over lymph nodes or places in your gums or tumors infection sites, you name it. That is what this is for. When you're done, you're simply going to... Also, when you're using it, it's a good idea to put this into a plastic bag just to make sure that uh, you don't contaminate with other people. However, you could just spray it with your colloidal silver. Also, let's see, just take note of which side is north and which side is south if people are concerned or want to know. Though I have not found a major difference. Most people seem to think the north side is the better side. And you can just take one more pulse. And there you go. So, when you're done, you're going to pull the power cord out. And realize that there's still a charge inside this unit, so you're going to want to let it go. Pulse it one more time. There you go. That is now complete. Ready to go. The only other things left to do would be is you would want to tape this up, make that more secure, glue it up, tape it up, and that is a functional device that can kill deep infections. A Bob Beck magnetic pulser. Look up Bob Beck or Robert Beck on YouTube and search for his paper, Take Back Your Power, because you can take back your power. Thanks for watching.